Duke an 8-9 game. Duke an 8 seed. Eastern Michigan a 9 seed. Right now, Blue Devils leading it by a score of 9-6. to six. Duke has been able to get in this position primarily because I think defensively they've been able to guard pretty well. Chris Collins started the game knocking down two threes, and I think that helped give good energy for his team. I told you about Collins' injury. Also, Steve Wojciechowski in the ball game, he suffered a high ankle sprain against Maryland in the ACC tournament, and he's skippy as well. Greg Newton, real aggressive inside, his second rebound. Here's Caper. In and out. Newton with the position. And a steal. Tober. Oh, he carried that. Thank you. You, you can do that back on the streets, but on the playground. You cannot do that in the games. He tried to change direction. No question about it. Chris Collins. Second turnover for the Eagles. Watch him take the ball and then take his hand and just take it right over the defender right there. It's Wojciechowski. There's no doubt about it. And he got advantage with it, and the official rightfully makes that call. Keep your eye on Chris Collins. You can see that the foot is still giving him some problems. So the problem it also happens to be Mike Krzyzewski just wanted to give Chris Collins a little bit of a blow because of the energy early in the game, the emotion, and he got him off the floor. But I don't know how much Wojciechowski can play for him. Wojciechowski can play for him. Scramble for the basketball. Domzowski hitting the floor, but here come the Eagles. Boykins pulling up in transition. Kept alive and recovered by James Head. The offensive rebounds have been what kept Duke in it, so when, when Duke is active on the glass, they take away the running opportunity for uh, Eastern Michigan to go back in the other direction. Inkache Izugwu, real athletic forward traveling on the play. Our bracket, Connecticut beating Colgate. But at the same time, they lose Ricky Moore, who goes out with the shoulder injury. He will not play on Saturday against the winner of this ball game. Here's Collins has it poked away from behind. Boykins challenging Newton. He gets there so quick. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. And one of the reasons they've got Jeff Capel bringing the ball up against Tobert is because, as I said earlier, uh, Boykin on Chris Collins is too much dribbling for Chris Collins. Chris Collins really is probably better off catching and shooting and making plays. Ricky Price. Long rebound goes out to Newton and he gets bumped as he hauls it down. Looks like Derek Dial picking up the foul. The team likes to run. They've got to be able to be active and create some opportunities for themselves. That's what Eastern Michigan does there. You see the little poke by Earl Boykin. Boykin to Tolbert, and then Boykin gets there too quick for Newton to be able to stop the shot. Here's Capel, got caught in midair. Inside. And they get it back out to Capel. Stan Brunson in the game right now for Duke. Out of Newark, Delaware, Coach Krzyzewski playing a lot of players because of injuries. Yeah, well, not only because of injuries, because of tempo. This tempo is quick enough, and it's what Eastern Michigan wants, so you need a lot of bodies on the floor if you do. Domzowski can't get the fadeaway on the baseline. EMU back the other way. <laughs> I mean, you look at Boykin, sometimes all the players run down. He gets lost in the traffic. He's so little. Tolbert with the step on the baseline as it knocked out of bounds. And an interesting story they tell about Earl Boykins. Growing up in Cleveland, his father used to Love to go watch high school basketball, and sometimes instead of paying for two tickets, he would put Earl in his gym bag, <laughs> bring him in the ball game, and then open his gym bag, and out steps <laughs> Earl and watch the game for one play. <laughs> two for the price of one. He is a little but dynamic player. A little in stature, not in game. Cut off there, back out to Tober. His shot a little strong. Tory Mills in the ball game now. He wears number 33, the younger brother of Terry Mills, the current Detroit Piston. Wickens again. And Brunson with the ball. Duke on the season holding teams to 43% shooting. They shoot 44. Here's Newton squaring up. You gotta close out on Newton when he gets that shot. He's feeling comfortable. That's the second time he's been able to do that. So you gotta close out on him, make him put it on the floor. Last five games, Newton with seven games in double figures. And a rejection 
There's Newton throwing it out of bounds. Oh, and then feeling good about it and, and, and making it be known. Newton is right there in position. First of all, left-handed, left block, left-handed up to block the shot. Newton timed it well, then playing well. Very good post defender. Duke so far with three blocks on the game. This Tobert fade away. Rebounded by Izugu. Here's Tobert again, sliding inside. He shot strong, gets his own rebound, and it's rejected by Ricky Price. 11 minutes, 58 seconds to go in the first half. Duke up 11-8. never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. With the Vortec engine in a Chevy S-Series, you can go around the world four times before you have to stop for a tune-up. trucks like a rock today a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own state farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow too you see we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs one that protects the people who count on you for so very much and the state farm agent will be there tomorrow too as your life changes to keep that plan working for the people you love State Farm sells life insurance. Face it, no other razor shaves closer or with more comfort than Gillette Sensor XL. Soft micro fins that protect your skin and individually spring-mounted twin blades that adjust to your face. No razor feels more comfortable during your shave or leaves your face smoother after. Gillette Sensor XL. And try new Gillette Shave Gel. Now the best gel takes care of your skin, too. Don Johnson is a cop, Master Kate. Speeding to CBS. With insurance premiums up the wazoo. Nash Bridges premieres March 29th. Back in Indianapolis, having Chris Collins back in the lineup is crucial for Duke. About a month ago, the team hit a lull, losing four of six. And that's when Coach K met with his senior guard and told him to take control of the team. Chris told me that that meeting had a huge impact on him. The results, five straight wins with Collins averaging 23 points a game during that stretch. And he said that's when the team stopped feeling sorry for itself and began making the most of what it had. And as you pointed out, Gus, that's not a whole lot with all those injuries. Chris Collins really stepping forward as the emotional leader during those wins. Inside, James Head can't get it to go. They beat Virginia, North Carolina State, Florida State in that game. They also, in that streak rather, they also beat UCLA and Maryland. Here's Price. Well, they, they did come around, man. I think one of the things they did for Chris Collins, knowing Mike, is just you've got to make some decisions out there and take this team, and, and you take the responsibility. And that freed him up from, you know, being concerned about what Mike had to say, Coach K, and that really helped him. James Head putting it on the floor. Almost had it stripped away. He'll hit the deck. Back out to Torrey Mills, who gets it back out to Boykins. Shot clock is down at nine. There's a little guy trying to get his shot off, does, and it rolls out. Offensive rebound and putback won't go for Mills. Greg Newton saves it and gets it back to Jeff Capel. He, Greg Newton here early has been just huge for Duke in the sense that every time there seems to be a rebound, it looks as though uh, Eastern Michigan can get it. Newton has come up with it. He's also made a basket. Ricky Price. Shovel to Newton, and he draws the foul on the baseline. Newton bumped by Izugwu. Heck of a pass by Brunson, though. I mean, he was down trying to pick it up and just shovel past the ball right over 
And that's how Newton was taking himself to the basket. But watch the ball. It goes down. It hits the ground. And Brunson gets it. And watch it. He shovels it before the defense can react. Getting over there in time. And then Newton gets, picks up the, gets the foul call. And he'll get it back out to Capel. He'll cross over. Trying to find some space. Got his man in the air. Left it for Newton. And he'll flush it. Five points for Newton. That play set up by Jeff Capel. Beat your man off the dribble. It gives you a tremendous advantage when people have to help out. But you like this Duke team because this team is playing smart. Got much more confidence in itself than it did any time, I think, in the season. I think they, they feel a lot better when you talk to Mike Krzyzewski. They'll tell you they're glad to be here. Jump shot from the corner, Theron Wilson. And having a chance to talk to Ben Braun yesterday, if they can get scoring from this young man, it'll change the complexion of the game. I think it will help if he can score every now and then. When, when they went up, I mean, they, they played before, and he's had 20 in the game, and all of a sudden he thought he was a scorer. That's not what he is. He can score, but he's not a scorer. Two on one. Mills, Boykins, and one. That's all Boykins. The tough part about that play for Duke is you got Wojciechowski trying to get back on that bad ankle with Boykins coming at you. You just don't have a very good chance to make a play. Wojciechowski does everything he does. He can. Here's the ball out right away to Torrey Mills. He gives it up to Boykins. And you can see Wojciechowski tried to change directions. Couldn't do it in time. Boykins at the line. The bucket. Right here, watch. He tries to get the heat. When he was at uh, Torrey Mills, he looked to put pressure on his foot to get back. And then there was no way to do it. Mike Krzyzewski has taken him out of the game. Brought Ricky Price back in. Well, Boykins makes it a two-point ball game. Blue Devils up 15-13. He's got seven. Comes into the game. Averaging 15 on the year. Steele. Mills. Mike Krzyzewski calls timeout because he can see the pressure. Has him a little disorganized. He'll take a 20-second just to try to help his team settle. No intimidation. By Duke, Eastern Michigan not afraid as they tie it up at 15 apiece. Well, one of the ways to get the tempo up is to come out with a little more pressure. You see right here, Torrey Mills comes out, gets it, finishes off a 7-0 run. You got to know the angles when you're playing against the defense. You got this is an area that's usually open right in here. But what you had was you have Greg Newton trying to make a play. He jumps in the air to try to make a pass here. Terry Mills was just so long, he just took that angle away. And when he takes it away, he's able to get there before the defense can get back. So Boykins, the point man on the half-court press for Eastern Michigan. And they fall back into the man-to-man. -man. Terry Mills has got all kinds of heritage. Not only is he Terry Mills' brother, his uncle, Grant Long, played at Eastern Michigan as well. Turn around jump shot in the paint by Gomzowski. Off the back of the iron. Eight forty-eight to go in the first half of play. We're all knotted up at 15 apiece. The Southeast region in Indianapolis, Indiana. Our first game, Connecticut beating Colgate. Mills got a good look. The way short there, though. But he'll get another try and stick it back in. He just stays around the ball and watched him after he misses that shot to see what he would do. And he just moved right back in off the bench. He's got five points. Eagles on a 9-0 run. They lead at 17-15. Collins down low. Gomsowski rejected by Wilson. Lee pass ahead. Wilson. Can't get it to drop on the baseline. Gonna have been going real good if Wilson makes that shot. I mean, he makes the jump shot. He blocks one down here. Then he goes back and gets the jumper. He's going to look too good, I think. Running the floor extremely well so far. Collins quick release. Oh, that's a hole. Oh, no, they thought Demzowski was pushing out. I thought they had head for a hole. 17-15 Eastern Michigan. They're getting it done on the defensive end against the Blue Devils. I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. 
I just love to drive. The new 1996 Monte Carlo. Personal space from genuine Chevrolet. With a Pentium processor inside your PC, you have a doorway to the most exciting action on the field. The best of PC software is the Intel Pentium processor. With a Pentium processor inside your PC, you have a doorway to intriguing artifacts on the net. For the best of the internet, it's the Intel Pentium processor. Jesse, Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. Now, don't ask me why, but Sharon wants to meet you. So once she gets here, just say hello, act normal, then we're out of here. I can't believe our little Billy has a girlfriend. Okay, first rule, my name is Bill, and I'm not little. Bill? You're not gonna wear that. What? What's with that hair? What? Why is he in a suit? Cool, huh? Why did I agree to this? Hi, Sharon, this is my family, let's go. Hey, wait, we're just going to McDonald's. Maybe they'd like to come with us. McDonald's? Yeah, that's okay with you, Bill. <laughs> Sandra Bullock, Hanks, Julie Roberts, Williams, Jim Carrey, Jerry Sonny, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hanks, George The Late Hanks, Show George with Hanks. David Letterman. Yes. One big shot after another. That's Ben Braun, the head coach of the Eastern Michigan Eagles, the MAC coach of the year in 88 and 91. Eastern plays in the Mid-American Conference. They have 24,000 students enrolled. And the school is placed in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Just outside of Ann Arbor as well, but they also have a basketball player of note by uh, John George Gervin. That's right, George Gervin. Recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm telling you, this guy offensively was, was unbelievably good. See, changing the defense here, a little 1 3 1. If you can do this, you force Duke to have to find pockets. But these people that can shoot the ball, Capel and Collins, are the guys you've got to get to. And good ball movement allowed to get that shot. Three pointer by Capel breaks the scoring drop by Duke. They hadn't scored in the last three minutes. They take a one point lead. Tobert offensively has been quiet for the Eagles. He leads them in scoring and will get a foul. It's like Brunson pushing out Zajac. Yeah, Brad was Brunson. He, what he's been doing is Brunson is because Wilson has got it going a little bit offensively. Mike Krzyzewski is double teaming and if he does that in returning, Brunson got there too late. Derek Dial in the corner and he fires up an air ball. <laughs> air ball, that wasn't even close. <laughs> it's all right, but Mr. Shop, get it close. Ricky Price the other way, and we'll get a whistle and a foul. Well, they, they call that on Wilson because he hit Ricky Price in the forehead, and that's just a, that's a bad foul. Ricky Price that far away, you don't want a foul. Now, right here, a little pressure come on him. Uh, Tolbert goes for it, gets back, and then Price is going to try to make an offensive play. And when he does, watch his forehead. He got tapped actually by Wilson, and Wilson gets his second foul on just a bad defensive play. And Wilson had made a difference in what Eastern Michigan was doing. An intimidating presence inside Theron Wilson, the all-time leader in block shots at Eastern Michigan. And he has to take a seat replaced by Mike Panisi. Price so far, no points. Rather 0 for 0 from the free throw line, four points and one rebound. He's got that touch. What Panisi has to do is come in and be a, a body, just put your body on people, and, and then, you know, let the rebound, if nothing else, fall to the ground. But he can't afford to let his man get it. What they lose is the shot blocking, which means I expect to see Duke going to the basket more. 2019. October. From way downtown, 
not a good shot there by Brian Tobert. I know he's a scorer on this team, but he needs no. to be a little bit more no. selective. No, no. That's a bad shot. There's, there's no good way to say that. That's a bad shot. That's a double team that comes out there. On, I don't care how much you score. Throw it to the other man and then get it back. Tobert, one of eight from the field so far. Here's Collins. Five forty-eight to go in the first half. Duke by one. Running a weave up top. Capel got the shot off and stuck it. Always tough to play a weave because the defensive players, if they don't communicate, can run into each other. That's what happened that time, and it allowed the basket by Capel. Twenty-second five points for Jeff Capel. Duke taking a 22-19 lead, and Ben Braun wants to talk things over. When you're in an offensive set, a lot of teams will do this. Late, they'll go into a weave. What they'll do is, like, watch Torrey Mills, and you'll see coming out is dial. He stops for a little bit because he's got to help. They're coming over. Nobody gets there in time, and Cable takes advantage. And a weave will do that. It forces people sometimes to, I mean, it doesn't force them. They don't communicate, and if you don't communicate, you can lose your man. And when you talk about Jeff Cable, He's averaging 16.9 points per game, but his shooting from the field has been a little suspect this season, 37%. Well, part of the reason is if you don't have the good inside play, you end up trying to break people off the dribble. That's a tough way to try to make a basket. So your percentage is probably going to go down. Here's Derek Dial with the pump fake. Leaves it for Zajac, and he has it swatted. Newton is there again. Here's Capel in the corner. Going to the basket, and you see right there, Dow goes. He tries at the last minute to get it to Zajac, and you see Newton, who blocked the shot before, gets another one. I'm telling you, he's been good. That's his second block shot. He's been good for Duke because he's not only made uh, baskets, but he's blocking it inside, protecting the middle. Blue Devils on a 7-0 run in the last two minutes. Here's Price. Picking up his dribble. Under five to play in the first half, 22-19. Capel guarded by Tolbert. Lobbed inside, Newton, double team, got it off anyway. Tipped up by Brunson. Out of bounds, we'll head the other way. Yeah, and, and, and it's a good effort, but Brunson, actually, the officials let it go the other way because he actually could have been called for a foul. Shot goes up, Newton takes a shot. You can see on the other side, Brunson, 31, inside, tips it. I thought that one might have been on the rim, but it had come off. But then he reaches in for the ball and knocks it out of bounds and still is Eastern Michigan's basketball. Here's Tolbert. Boykins looking to create something. Guarded by Collins. Here's Panisi in the corner. Lefty jump shot. Kept alive and recovered by Ricky Price. Ricky Price is one of those guys who, who has enough ability that he can help you win games doing a little thing. That's too hard to handle. That pass is too hard. Cable trying to whip it down to Greg Newton. Fifth turnover of the ball game for Duke. You know what, but the tempo is where Duke wants it. If you notice, Eastern Michigan isn't up and down the court. And that's why you're looking at 22 points here with four minutes to go. Boykins, the little guy. Boykins. He's got nine. Oh, boy, Newton is down, holding his back. Timeout. Right there, you see the little jump shot by Boykins, but you got to worry about Newton being down. He's been active, blocking shots. Boy, that's a big loss if he doesn't play. By tradition, unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Cellular One offers remarkably clear service. Her father couldn't be here, so he's listening over the phone. In fact, clarity could be why more people choose Cellular One. She sounds great, honey. Cellular One, the nation's number one cellular service. The RCA Home Theater. With SRS Sound. Is now. 50% brighter. With a sharper, clearer picture. Better picture, better sound. Better get out of the way. I 
Chevy's got the highest resale value of any full-size pickup. Like of course, to find that out, you'd have to sell it. Fred Engel just bought fertilizer for the women's gymnastics team. The Garcias got a new love seat for America's boxers. Deborah Bishop just bought five dresses for the U.S. decathlon team. And Tony Johnson, a new garden hose for the U.S. mountain bikers. When you use your Visa card, Visa will make a donation to help all our Olympic hopefuls go for the gold. Like Jerry Graff, who picked out this new aquarium for the synchronized swimmers. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. With Ryder, you can drive off with great rates. So whether it's cross town or cross country, don't make a move without calling Ryder first. Call 1-800-GO-RIDER. Welcome back to our studio in New York City. Eastern Michigan and Duke, it's 22 to 21 now in the southeast region. I want to take you around the tournament, show you what's going on. Montana State and Syracuse, 28 to 22, Clark Kellogg. Well, Quadre Lawless for Montana State had made five, six of his six, six of his first six field goals all in the paint. He's got 12 points, but John Walter starting to get it going for Syracuse. They're up five right now. Five points, 7.43 left in the first half. We have four games now underway in the tournament and let's bring you around and go out to Dallas the Midwest region Virginia Tech and Wisconsin and Green Bay playing to form now it's uh, two teams of two similar styles a lot of experience on the floor. exactly and both of these teams will want to play kind of a half court game I think one of the keys to look for in this game is the ability of Virginia Tech maybe to spurt away a little bit but this will be a very deliberate game good solid defense at both ends of the floor Virginia Tech and Orange, they've got to learn to hang on to the ball. They've had a couple of turnovers early in this game, and it is early. They're knotted at six, and now Wisconsin Green Bay will bring the ball up. And this is what they want to do. They want to spread you out, Wisconsin Green Bay. Very deliberate, run kind of a motion game in their half-court set, predicated on good spacing, good execution, and solid screen. Two veteran teams, and should be a good game. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Up in Providence, uh, in the East region, uh, the veteran team, UMass, has the ball right now against Central Florida, 29 to 19 with 9.36 left in the half. Well, UMass, an excellent rebounding team, Pat, and they've pounded the glass, and they've also turned over Central Florida. That's why they have the 10-point cushion. All right, uh, that's what's going on around the country now. Four games going on here. March Madness uh, rolls on on CBS. We'll see you at halftime. Let's go back to Gus and Quinn, where Eastern Michigan has a two-point lead over the Blue Devils of Duke. See you later. So far, six lead changes in this basketball game. Two minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Eastern leading Duke. And the story for Eastern Michigan, Earl Boykins. He's 5'5". Five, five. He's 4 of 7 from the field with 9 points. And Greg Newton returns to the game after going down with a back injury. He took a tough shot from Mick Canisi. Uh, Canisi as you see, a 5-second call. And then Chris Collins just goes off on his team there, but there's a 5-second call. Mike Krzyzewski knows that his group has got to get their minds in the game because you don't want to linger here with this uh, Eastern Michigan team. They, they're a confident team, and they believe they can win this game. So Newton... As you said, Quinn took a shot in the back from Mike Panisi, and he's playing with a bruised rib. Traveling violation on the baseline. Basket will not count. Full court pressure right now by the Eagles. And this is Collins. Guarded by Boykins. They got a trap, they blindside trap Collins and try to get him over here in this corner. They reverse to Newton inside Ricky Price, and he'll jam it. And that's what a good passing team can do to any trap. If you get it to the middle somehow, the backside is off open. Duke Blue Devils know that, and that's the play they made. It's the right play every time. Got a tie score at 24. 2.05 to go in the first half. Derek Dial has it partially deflected by Jeff Capel. But Greg Newton unable to 
established some position for himself, and he travels. He came down, and you know what? Momentarily, he lost his concentration. I mean, first of all, Cable makes a very good block, but you could almost see Newton. See, he's got it, and he just kind of loses concentration and just holds it a step too long. Eighth turnover of the game for Duke. They come into the season averaging 13 per game. October just made his last three-pointer. He feels like he's got it. You could see him kind of touch those two fingers together, thinking I got it, and he made that first three-pointer. And now you can see he's got his offensive rhythm. Seven points for Tolbert. Capel almost stripped again. Here's Price putting his head down. And this will be a blocking foul called against Torrey Mills. Our summary, both teams shooting in the 30s, 33% for Eastern Michigan, 36 for Duke. Eight points off the fast break for the Eagles. Three ties and seven lead changes. But one thing for Eastern Michigan, I think for Duke, to their credit, they've been very active in making sure that there are no easy baskets for Eastern Michigan. That's why there's only eight points. Here's Tobert heading up the sidelines. Nice look inside. Head, though, can't make the catch. I thought that was a tough pass to make in that traffic. Head tried to come up with it, and, and because it came through too many play players, he couldn't pick it up until late, and that's why he lost it. A minute, ten seconds remaining. Eagles on top of the Blue Devils, 26-24. A stand the man to man. Price sliding inside. Ricky Price floating to the basket for the Deuce. He's got 10. You're not going to find a, a, a much better offensive player, Ricky Price. He, you know what he does? He takes advantage of coming to that two-foot stop where he can change directions, and that's how he gets open. Price, third team on ACC. He's a sophomore out of Carson, California. Boykins trying to change gears on the baseline. 33 to go on the game clock. 11 on the shot clock. Here's Boykins from downtown. Oh, he got held. Brunson held his right hand. No doubt about it. Mick Panisi was trying to get it, and Brunson held his arm. Second foul on Stan Brunson. So Coach Ben Braun calls out for one shot for Eastern Michigan. Well, ben Braun is, is in a good position. Mike Krzyzewski got what he wanted. He wanted his team to be able to, to get the rebound, but unfortunately Brunson fouled, and now it looks like Eastern Michigan will have the last shot of the half. 19 seconds remaining in the first half. It's down to 11 now. Here's Tobert on the right wing. Five seconds. He's got to do something. Forces one. Rims out on him. The heave by Chris Collins. And at the end of the first half of play, as expected, an 8-9 game. Very tight. Duke, Eastern Michigan, tied at 26. There are more than 77 million parents in America today. 77 million moms and dads all doing the same thing, worrying about their kids. That's why you need Chevy Lumina, a car you can trust. Lumina offers an integrated child safety package. Few cars can offer your kids this protection, and no car in its class can offer it for the price of a Lumina. For 77 million of you, that's one less thing to worry about. That's genuine Chevrolet. She's a certified goddess, your soulmate waiting to happen. Without your Motorola pager, you would have missed her, because you were out doing stuff. Biking, skating, sweating. Then she paged you. Could you put some lotion on her back? You jump fast enough to make Pavlov proud, because the wheels will wait. A goddess won't, without getting snippy. Thanks to your Motorola pager, you know now. Without one... Dave, are you there? Are you there? You're just a lonely guy in tight shorts. Dave. I can't believe this has happened to me. I mean, I, the, the car the tires are gone and the battery, the battery's Everybody gone. Everybody goes through bad times. And you can see them change. You calm them down. You explain you something to them when maybe they were feeling in a position of powerlessness. Robert, could you call a cab? That's a great feeling. When something happens to somebody else, I want to give them that. Thank you so much. I think that's what this is all about, really. Being in good hands is the only place to be.
You're even better broken in. Earlier Coming up in a moment, Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will be along in our New York studio. So the score here at halftime, Eastern Michigan and Duke all tied up at 26 apiece. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Stay with us. On the information superhighway, you need more than the latest technology. You need a very powerful drive. Chevy Blazer with the Vortec V6. It's nice to know it's there. Join 60 Minutes Ed Bradley at ringside Sunday to watch Muhammad Ali, still the greatest, in the fight of his life against the toughest opponent he ever fought, Parkinson's Syndrome. This is CBS. Invaders from space are coming to attack your home. Fight back now with pink insulation from Owens Corning. Conquer brutal heat in the summer. Chilling cold in the winter. And a barrage of noise all year long. So keep comfort and quiet in. And those pesky invaders out with Owens Corning. Building performance that's right at home. is located just outside most major cities. Why outside? Because we're the largest electronics and appliance store in the world. And it's cheaper out here. And if it's cheaper for us, well, you figure it out. Incredible universe. That's what it looks like, the 1996 version of the NCAA tournament. Four games going on right now as March Madness swings in on a Thursday. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Clark Kellogg. Welcome to our New York studios and our coverage. 26-26 is our score, and I think a lot of people in the field their brackets out said, should I take Eastern Michigan? Should I take Duke? Which one? And they still don't know, right? Yeah, it's tied right now. In Eastern Michigan, one of their star players, Brian Tolbert, only 3 of 12. He's their leading scorer, 19 points a game, only has 7 in the first half. All right, let's take everybody out to Providence right now, where a 16 seed is facing Massachusetts and uh, hanging in there with them like a 16 seed earlier. 35-27 is the score. Let's go on out to Tim Ryan and Al McGuire. Howard Porter, Atlanta for Central Florida. Porter, number 22, Castle for Harry Kennedy. Castle's pull up off the back of the rim, rebounded by UMass Dana Dingle. But UMass has to realize when it's not there, don't take it. Hamby can't get the shot away, and he's fouled. That'll bring back Tyrone Weeks. And we have a timeout with 3.55 to go. In a 30 All right, and so 3.55 to go in the first half, 35 to 27, Clark. And a 16 seat earlier, San Jose State gave Kentucky a little run. Will it be the same uh, situation here? Only a little run. UMass will continue to dominate the boards. Canby already has 12 points. All right, another game going on right now. We're happy to take you to, and that's Virginia Tech, Wisconsin, Green Bay. A lot of veterans on the floor of this one, and we have two veterans calling for you as well. Mike Gorman and George Raveling are at courtside, and now, so are you. Tom Anderson in for Wisconsin Green Bay. 
Under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. A low scoring affair. Our second game of the day here in Dallas. And Virginia Tech with the four point lead and the basketball over the fighting Phoenix of Wisconsin Green Bay. And Mike Heiderman with his head in his hands over there on the Wisconsin Green Bay bench. They're Got looking it. to get that ball down inside the ace Custis, and there it is. Pretty good collapse by the Phoenix. Watlington into the paint. The floater, nope. Rebound taken down there by Nordgaard. And Ohm will walk it up. One interesting aspect of Wisconsin Green Bay offense is their terminology. They call screeners blockers, and they call offensive cutters movers. The movers in their offense are Norgard and Berlowski. Berlowski has first personal foul. No pass. That's the first on Berlowski. Sean Smith has come back into the game, and Travis Jackson's gone to the bench for Virginia Tech. Wisconsin Green Bay does a great job of taking away dribble penetration. And they do that because they have such good spacing in their defense. Hands to Smith. Watlington knocks down a three. The first for Damon Watlington, best three-point shooter in the Atlantic 10 this year. And it's 15-8 as Wisconsin Green Bay working on a five-minute drought. Waddington has taken more three-point attempts. In fact, he's taken twice as many, Mike, as anybody else on the team. That's the green line, huh? Man's coming up with a steal down the baseline. And the foul is going to be on Ace Custis as Gresh was battling for the spot with Custis. And Custis picks up his second. It was a contest for low post position. Gress was trying to take the position away from Ace Custis, force him off the box. Ace Custis was trying to maintain that. All right, as we see Ace Custis there, and we told his story earlier, and uh, Virginia Tech up by seven in the first half. Well, they've got the ability to make the three-point shot, and they're stingy defensively. Wisconsin Green Bay has hit a little bit of an air pocket offensively. That's why they're down seven. They're at work out in uh, the west now in Albuquerque and Montana State, just taking it to the hole against Syracuse, huh? Getting a ton of baskets in the paint area. Syracuse is going to have to shut that down if they want to hold on and win this one. They are at halftime, 38 to 34. Let's get you up to date on what's going to happen tonight. Our, we, our coverage begins at 7.30. We've got Arkansas and Penn State about 7.40. Uh, Mississippi State plays. A lot of people like that team. Western Carolina and Purdue. And then Cal, great guards against Iowa State. That's around 8 o'clock. We thank you for watching Penn's All at the Half. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Clark Kellogg. We'll be here all afternoon long. We'll see you in a little bit. Stay with us. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Repairing a car is like math. Once you master the basics, then you can build on them. Simple. Same with Midas. They excel the mufflers and expand into other systems on your car. Exhaust, braking, alignment, and suspension systems. In short, they became auto systems experts. Hey, I'm no genius, but it makes sense to me. Midas Auto Systems Experts, what can we do for you today? To be a great athlete, you need talent and lots of practice. What you don't need are drugs. Using drugs won't improve your skills or your life. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. When I first started officiating, um, the thing that uh, surprised me the most at the college level was the intensity of the players, the coaches, and, and the fans. I was tremendously overwhelmed with the intensity level of the whole atmosphere, how hard the kids played, how hard the coaches worked, and how excited the fans got over the whole experience. I think the, the toughest thing about officiating in relation to the kids is that 
as officials, um, we find ourselves getting older every year. The kids, they're always between 18 and 22 years old. And in order to get yourself mentally and physically ready to keep up with them, you've really got to work at it. Some of the things that happen in college basketball, some of the plays that the uh, young men make are so great. Sometimes you stand under the basket and you witness this play, and you just want to drop the whistle out of your mouth and, and stand there and applaud like everybody else. They're, they're tremendous athletes, and they do some marvelous things. This message provided by the NCAA. Bonnie takes on Scotty Pippen. A new Bonnie after Civil Sunday. Yes! It is the shoes. Ricky Price, 10 points for Duke. And we've got a tie score here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we'll return to Indianapolis after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Final call. We've got to move fast, Kirby. I hope you booked Hertz. Uh, not exactly, but this company's fast. Fast as Hertz number one club goal? Not exactly, but they do have a special place to pick up the car. Like Hertz? Not exactly, but it'll be waiting. Under a canopy? With the keys in it? Not exactly. And protected from the weather? Not exactly. In Rent-A-Car, there's Hertz and there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. Counting on that promotion, Kirby? No, not, not exactly. Ah! This is CBS. And home improvement. Do you realize that people have a tiny compass in their nose? No, I was never aware of that. Tim learns a surefire way to never get lost. I know where we're going. I know where we are. But leave it to him to make something surefire backfire. Ask for directions. You're really lost. Can Tim steer clear of trouble and just admit he's going in the wrong direction? You're lost again, huh? Just like a woman. Or will he wait until... Welcome to Ohio. On home improvement. Tonight at 6 on WGNX Channel 46. I'm here at Rooms to Go, buying now, but paying in March 1997. Exercising self-control, telling myself that I do have to pay for it eventually. I mean, I can't buy everything, but I can buy this bedroom. The price is unbeatable. I'll have it in days, and I won't pay one penny until March 1997. No down payment, no interest adding up, no interest, period. Rooms to Go pays it for you. I'm telling you, you can't beat it. You can't beat Rooms to Go. Okay, what do you think when I say Kentucky? Weird colored grass, new fat for candidates? Nah, you think Wildcats, right? Then you think Patino. The guy's intense. Well, as intense as you can get in a flashy Italian suit. Just like his players. So what are these tough cats wearing this year? Con's blue. Denim. Head to toe. From Congress. Con's blue and the Wildcats are a force to be reckoned with, I reckon. Because together, they're gonna batter us and deep fry the competition. Kentucky style. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Honda, Gillette Sensor XL, Jiffy Lube, and by Hertz. Our second game of the day, Eastern Michigan and Duke all tied up at 26, and we are at halftime. And in the first half of play, tempo, that really uh, tells the story. Duke able to slow it down, especially when Theron Wilson went out with foul trouble. Well, that's the key, because Theron Wilson blocks shots, and when he does that, that creates transition baskets, gives them energy, and he got those two fouls, and they took him out one other time in the first half, and because of that, they couldn't get what they want going. Third member of our team, Andrea Joyce. Let's check in with her right now. All right, guys. Both teams talked about tempo at halftime. Eastern Michigan wants to pick it up, their strategy to wear Duke down and tire out the Blue Devils. Now, Duke wants the slower pace, but they will try to step it up offensively in terms of their aggression. They feel that their best shot at containing Brian Tolbert is to keep Ricky Price on him as much as possible. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Andrea. Right now, Duke with the basketball. Here's Price. Cut off. By Zajac, they lob it inside. Gonzalski, his left-hand shot won't go. Saved by Theron Wilson. Wilson picked up two fouls and had to sit out, and that's when Duke was able to really slow things down. It was the same thing that happened earlier in the first half. They took him out just to really to settle him down because he was a little anxious, and Duke also took the lead then. That's a good call. Brian Tober travels. travels. 
first half of play. 32% from the field for Eastern Michigan, 37 for Duke. What do you see here? Uh, except the fast break points, if you're Eastern Michigan, probably should be closer to 12 or so. That's when they're more in their flow. They'll get 24 or so points in transition basket. Duke is a very seasoned team in, in that regard, and Mike Krzyzewski adds a lot to that understanding what Eastern Michigan wants to do. Here's Price raising up his shot off the front of the rim. Knocked out to Bryant's over. He push it up the sidelines. Here's Derek Dial. Skip pass. Say Jack to the cup. Nice backdoor look. Oh, no, no, no. Don't come with it like that. No, sir. Please. <laughs> oh, no. Brian Zobert, senior out of St. Martin DeForest High School in Detroit, Michigan. Athletic move here. Yeah, but Say Jack makes a good pass. I mean, he knows he's going to get hit, and he takes it. And he's excited about it on the other side because he struggled to get points. But Zajac, the penetration forces the help. And when it did, Brian Tolbert got a basket, an easy one that helps him get two of his nine points. Meanwhile, Taman Domzalski picks up foul number three for Duke. Full court pressure right now by the Eagles. Collins up the sidelines, leaves his feet. Here's Price. Derek Dow with the board. That's one of those plays that Theron Wilson called because he's standing back there. And you, whoa, that's two points. They're starting to come with the show now. But Theron Wilson forced that shot to be lobbed up by Ricky Price. And when he did that, he, Ricky Price missed it. That's one he probably would just lay straight in. Couldn't do it that time. Here's Price up the sidelines again. Cross court pass to Zolski. Took it to the basket strong, and Theron Wilson jumped out of the way. Didn't want to pick up his third. His first two of the game for the freshman from New Mexico. Boykins. What a tough task for Chris Collins. He's got a bad foot and has to guard a guy as quick as Earl Boykins. But I've got to tell you this. Chris Collins on that defensive play, I thought, did a very good job. At that time, Dow gets fouled going for the offensive rebound. Collins was able to stay in front of Boykins, and that's all you want him to do anyway. And it looks like that foul could be called against Domzalski. That's his fourth. And he'll have to leave the game with 18-10 remaining in the second half. He is a presence inside for Duke. 18-10 to go in the second half. Eastern Michigan up 31-28. This game is tied at 26 at halftime. Largest lead for Eastern Michigan has been four. Largest lead for Duke has been five. The defense by Duke has been very good. If you notice here, and this is 15 seconds, and Earl Boykin hadn't done anything with the basketball because Ricky Price has got Boykin, and if he comes over the side, Capel picks him up. And he shot off the side of the rim. Rebound to Dial off the glass and in. Derek Dial. Dial is one of those active players that just kind of seems to be around and makes little quick shots. Comes up with some tough rebound. Red shirt sophomore out of Cass Tech in Detroit. Here's Price squaring up. Boykins. The pull up. It's there he is again. That's Dow. Trying to get it out. And he does. But he carries the basketball. Yeah, he did, because Chris Collins makes a pretty good play. 33-28 our score. Eastern Michigan on top. Our first game, Connecticut beating Colgate by nine. Good game for Colgate. They should keep their heads up high after that performance. But Ricky Moore lost for at least Saturday's game with an injured shoulder for Connecticut. Yeah, that's got to be the question for Connecticut, how they, how they make the rotation change to Ricky Moore out of them. And a block shot and a foul. Theron Wilson with another rejection, his third. And Stan Brunson creating the foul as he tried to hold down the rebound. You see right there, there's the block by Theron Wilson, and Brunson tries to come and get it. He knocks the ball out of bounds, and they just gave the out-of-bounds possession to Eastern Michigan to call against the foul. Now, Ricky Moore 
against Colgate. Trying to block a shot. He's number 13. Watch him go down. And he goes down on that right shoulder. Well, I think he'd be number 21. He did it the first time. He did it when he hit the hip. You could see that that you could see it almost flex a little bit when he hit that hip as he was going down. And then by that time he hit the ground, he had gone down to the ground. But it popped out and went back in, so it'll be sore. But I don't they say, and I believe it's correct, he should not play until out of this game. That's Derek Dodd. This Eastern Michigan team made up of some very athletic basketball players. I'll tell you what else is made up. It's very street tough kids. These, these young people have been out, you know, playing basketball in some tough areas, so they'll just play hard. Colin. over there, please. It comes out of nowhere. Fourth block for Theron Wilson, not in my house. How about that? Chris Collins does a good job, gets his body between the defense, but you see coming from the other side is Theron Wilson. That's what Eastern Michigan did not have in the first half was that inside presence. Wilson went out with foul trouble. It's Wojciechowski in the ball game, playing with that high ankle sprain on his right foot. Collins spinning inside, another rejection. That's Sajak ahead to Dial. Michigan going on a run. They lead it 37-28 and watch these Eagles. They're flying here. They've been soaring all right. They've been soaring after shots when they go in the air. There's a shot there. It's blocked and when you get it blocked you can push it back to the other side and you see the finish here by Borkin's 6-0 run. <laughs> standard the Del Sol from Honda all across America you're there to see us through just around the corner a neighborhood Jiffy Lube since 1979 Jiffy Lube has serviced over a hundred million cars Jiffy Lube's signature service and we offer Pennzoil 3,000 miles you make a smile America's Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. Face it, no other razor shaves closer. Or with more comfort than Gillette Sensor XL. No razor is better. As a new parent, my hours can be pretty unpredictable. I think a lot of the young parents that come into my office and talk about life insurance have a lot of the same needs and have gone through a lot of the same things that I've gone through. They're really looking for somebody to tell them about life insurance, to talk to somebody they trust. When people leave my office, I think they feel that, hey, this guy doesn't just know about life insurance, he knows about life, too. State Farm is there. They're everywhere. King Cobra Oversize, golf's number one selling irons. Layup by Earl Boykins gives Eastern Michigan a nine-point lead. 15.46 to go here in the second half of play. And the story thus far in the second half, the shot-blocking ability of Theron Wilson. He's got four blocks in this basketball game, and he starts their fast break. Well, he's got three in this half, and the other problem that the Duke has is in the game, they have Chris Collins, who has a bad foot, and Wojciechowski, who has a bad foot. So their transition is not going to be nearly as good going back defensively, so they've got to be very careful not to overextend their defense and expose themselves to that. Wilson came into this game with 69 blocks on the year, but he'll pick up the offensive foul right there, trying to clear out some position for himself inside. 
Well, inside, Wilson has to be careful that he was the energy he had. You see, Newton will fight him all the way. You see, he's got position, but you can't go fishing with the arm, they call it, or swimming. And he starts swimming. Newton does a little bit of acting, but it's actually a pretty good defensive job. And you see, Theron Wilson has picked up his third foul. So the last time Wilson sat down in the first half, it allowed Duke to slow down the tempo. We see they can slow it down, but even more importantly, they can take the ball to the basket because there's no shot blocker to stop them. So if they don't get baskets, they get some, they probably can get fouled. And here's Price. Brunson had trouble with the catch. And Jeff Capel steps on the baseline out of bounds. Eighth turnover of the game for Duke. Eastern Michigan leading by seven, but you know that Duke eventually will make a run. Very well coached team, playing in probably the toughest conference in the country, arguably, the ACC, where they were eight and eight. After they very well at the end of the season. Yeah, they were eight and eight after all seven start. I mean, so they, they fought themselves back into it. And that was the transition from what was a difficult year last year with Krzyzewski going out and the club coming back and Mike being able to put get hands on with his team again. Stripped away. Bryant's over to head to dial. Wake is the trailer. Dial to the cup. Did a good job of getting his body on with Jeff Capel. Remember the first half he blocked that shot? Dial cut him off. So Capel could not get enough energy to spring up to get that block. Ryan Tobert starting that play as he comes up with the strip. 39-30. Eagles on top of Duke. This is where Duke will go for their arms. And we'll get a foul. to go in the second half Eastern Michigan up by nine over Duke but we get a foul on the baseline Ricky Price going to the hole and he picked up the blocking foul inside Newton spin how about that Newton he's come to play today he's got nine points played well he's just giving them just that that's only their six point here in the second half but without Darren Wilson in it that's what you can get and we'll get an offensive charging foul against John Zajac. I tell you, I've been watching this a little bit, and, and Mike Krzyzewski is a veteran coach, and he stayed at the officials. There have been a couple calls that have not gone one, gone effectively in the right direction. You see right there, going to the basket, that foul could have easily been called from the back from Brunson because he, got, he pushed on that one. I thought that's what happened down here on Eastern Michigan's end as well. Our bracket, Connecticut winning against Colgate. They will face the winner of this game, Mississippi State, Virginia Commonwealth, to follow along with Princeton and UCLA. For Duke, they need to get their emotional leader back on track. Chris Collins with the ball. He hadn't scored since starting the game two or three from the field. He, one of the problems is Boykins is guarded, which makes a tough one. Two. He wears down. See, that's a heck of a play he makes there, but he, he, he can get one down with Boykins guard and putting a lot of pressure on him. 11 points for Greg Newton and a 20-second timeout called by Eastern Michigan. Duke starting to cut into the lead. They trail 39-34. Good change of direction there by Chris Collins. He gets knocked pretty hard by Paniski, but he's still able to make a play. And when you've got a guy who's a senior, he's the, your leader, he's done some things for you all year, when he makes plays like that, it gives everybody a little added extra uh, in juice, a little energy, a little bump. And that's what they need right here. They've been able to fight back. They were down nine, they're down five now. You see Chris Collins, the emotional leader of this squad, averaging 16 on the year. Six today, but when you watch him move, pay attention to his foot, you can see that he's dragging that foot a little bit. They can't get enough out of Wojciechowski to take the pressure off of him, and Chris Collins is being smart here. He's backing up. Duke has even gone to a 2-3 zone as an, in a way, as a way to try to take some of the pressure off of Chris Collins having to guard Boykin. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Tober. Dribble penetration off of the line. <laughs> kind of a throw on the way by against a zone. You can't let anybody get that close to the basket. Ryan Tolbert 
taking a running start, hitting that shot. 41-34. And we'll get a foul up top. Mills holding on to Price. If you're playing defense, you got to understand, particularly in the zone, don't let anybody get into the scenes. Watch right here. He just kind of throws this at the glass, and he knows right now where the square is, and he puts it right on the spot. Ricky Price falling to the floor, and they call a timeout. Twenty-second time I call by Duke. Forty-one thirty-four, our score. Twelve twenty to go here in the second half of play. The Southeast Region. Well, the winner of this game will face top-seeded Connecticut. The tough part about this, the winner of this game is both of these teams will be excited about it for different reasons. I think Duke will be very excited about it because they had such a difficult season last year and the winner game in the NCAA tournament after going through what they went through last year will be emotional. Eastern Michigan is a school that's school, if you will call a mid-major. To beat a team like Duke emotionally, it's charged up for that. It will be very difficult for both of these teams to re-energize to come back to play against UConn. Eastern Michigan already with a huge win. They probably didn't know it was at that time as we get a whistle inside. No way. No way. Offensive foul against Brian Tober. First of all, Tober to jump right. Watch him jump right and watch the hands come forward. See, the hands came forward and Tober was jumping to the right. The official missed that. Eastern Michigan had the Texas Tech, their only loss of the season in the Sun Carnival Classic in El Paso, Texas. Texas Tech on the season, 28-1. They're playing Northern Illinois today in Richmond. Both teams are a little raggedy here on their offense. You've got to get up there. Boykin's got the roll. Yeah, I mean that, and that's what Chris Collins is telling from uh, uh, Newton. you got to get up there and get a hand up because Boykin will make that shot. At about 5-5, five, five, Boykin's has no problems getting his shot off. This is so quick. He can change directions faster than most people and get himself set up. Nice feed on the baseline. And they say it's last touch by the Blue Devils. I'll tell you what really was a very good feed. But you got to understand when you're playing with the team, you got to communicate. Watch the pick. Greg Newton has got to get up. But boy, and will drill this all day. Five years ago, I started hauling cars for Saturn. Man, that was something. People wanted to know all about them. What kind of car is that? A Saturn. Can I get it with a sunroof? Can I get one with leather? Yeah, you can get it with fog lamps. And just when I can explain everything about these cars... These are the dent-resistant doors. Saturn decides to change things and come out with new ones. <laughs> oh, well. Here we go again. Make sure you stay in the chariot, Chuck. I guarantee you're going to win the dang race. <laughs> That's good. True story. Oh, yeah. You are so special. That chariot thing you did and the water stuff. I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light. Frankly, son, you frighten me. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And it's more like, I love you, man. <laughs> See? Every time you make a long-distance call, AT&T sends out a signal to check the quality of the line, automatically routing around trouble before you've even finished dialing. Because at AT&T, we don't just say your calls get through. We guarantee it. Linda, I'd like to bounce an idea off you. AT&T, for the life of your business. I'm Jackie Garner Kersey, and I have asthma, but it hasn't kept me from setting four world records because I control my asthma every day. And I know you can help prevent attacks before they occur if you stick faithfully with the plan your doctor prescribes every day. Never let those good days with no symptoms fool you into thinking you can slack off and get away with it. For the latest ways to control your asthma, contact the Asthma Control Program from Glaxo Welcome. I don't let asthma control my life, and you don't have to let it control yours either. It's alive! 
Don Johnson is coming to CBS with a buddy, a badge, and a big bag of new tricks. I can't wait. Nash Bridges premieres Friday, March 29th. 43-36, Eastern Michigan, on top of the Duke Blue Devils with 11 minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Been a great second half shooting-wise for Eastern Michigan. They're 8 of 11 from the field, 72%. Duke 5 of 14, 35%. Yeah, you know, part of Duke's problem is that they haven't been able to rebound the ball like they, they should normally. They, they're being out-rebounded 31 to 21, and that's one of the reasons that Eastern Michigan has this lead. In the first half, Eastern shot 37% from the field. Great rebound, Mills, and stick back. I'm telling you, that's a tough rebound. He was off balance coming up with that. Good spring, good positioning. Maybe he's talking to Big Brother a little bit before coming into this game. He's talking to Uncle, because that's what Grant Long can do. Now, Terry is a little bit more of an offensive-minded player. That was more like Uncle Grant. Newton, good catch inside. Panisi with the rejection, but Brunson is there for the foul. Stan Brunson scores really coming in. Now Syracuse winning big over Montana State. UMass up big as well against Central Florida. 45-38 our score here. Approaching the 10-minute mark. Lob at the front of the rim. James Head, little baby hook inside, and he buries it. That's what we've been talking about, getting rebounds. And because Domazowski picked up his fourth foul, they just got him off the bench. He picked up his fourth foul, and without him, they don't have an extra big body. Everybody contributing for Eastern Michigan. They lead 47-38 over Duke. Collins with the push off, and he got his shot away, and he buried it. Here's Mills running the break. Mills has given him a solid lift off the bench. He did it in the first half. Coming back here in the second half, he's also been active. Got a rebound basket out on the break. Dory Mills transferred from Central Michigan to Eastern. Out of Romulus. And we get an offensive foul against the Blue Devils. Nine minutes, 16 seconds remaining in this ball game. Eastern Michigan turning this into a track meet. Watch him go. Timeout. Duke. By tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Yes. Face it. No other razor shaves closer. Or with more comfort than Gillette Sensor XL. No razor is better. We're in northern Kenya being chased by a black rhino. Whoa! Woo. The thing to remember when being chased by a black rhino is that while they're great in the straightaways, they can't corner worth beans. The proceeding has been brought to you by the all-new Nissan Pathfinder. Now with increased horsepower. For when you want to get away. That should do it. I'm transferring $100,000 right now. The electronic world can be a treacherous place. Yeah, well, look where we are. It this doesn't great. look right. It looks great. I'm not happy here. And if you've got some kind of off-the-shelf network that's not custom designed for your business, then something unexpected can happen. It's not there yet? Have you heard what Jim's driving? What's he got now? You can see this thing. What an incredible machine. Sleek, aerodynamic. Fast? Oh, yeah. That baby really moves. So what kind of engine does he have in that thing anyway? Nuclear reactor. You'd be amazed at what teenagers are driving these days. Right full rudder, steady force, 355, five, hold on. For more information, call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up.
49 to 40 is our score up in Indianapolis. Let's take you around the country and get you a taste of what's going on in the tournament. In Providence, it's Central Florida against UMass. It's 56-41, UMass in white. Edgar Padilla has five steals in the first three minutes of this second half, and that allowed UMass to extend a four-point halftime lead to the 15-point lead you see now. Did you know that Padilla and Travieso were born on exactly the same day? And UMass leads 56 to 41, about 16:40 left in that ball game. Down in Dallas at Reunion Arena, this is a slowpoke game. So the Virginia Tech, the Hokies poking along against Wisconsin Green Bay, 27-21. Both of these teams are solid defensively, are more comfortable in the half-court game, so it's expected to stay low scoring. Virginia Tech may be a little more firepower from behind the three-point line. A lot of experience on the, on the floor down there, and it's 27-21, a low-scoring, slow-paced affair out in Dallas at Reunion Arena, and we'll keep you up to date on that one. Out in West Albuquerque, Montana State uh, tried to take it to Syracuse for a while. They're at a timeout now. Syracuse now gone ahead 63 to 11-13 left in that ball game. So that's a sense of what's going on in the tournament. Let's go back to Eastern Michigan and Duke, where it's now 50 to 42 with 8:34 left in the game. Gus Johnson, Quinn Buckner. And a 10-point lead now for Eastern. There's Collins. There's the weave again. If you don't communicate, that's where you can cause yourself some problems. And a whistle, a three-second violation called against Duke. Kamzowski trying to position himself in case the shot goes and up. Staying in there too long. Half, Eastern with their largest lead of the game. They're up by 10. 8-16 remaining here in the second half. The southeast region in Indianapolis, Indiana. James Head swings it in front, picks up his dribble. His dial from downtown. No, he, he dialed long distance on that one. <laughs> I knew that was going to come. See, I was going to say that. I'm supposed to say I'm that. I'm sorry, but he did. I mean, he was way out there. <laughs> okay, you're my partner, so I'll let that slip. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Trailing 52-44 in Indianapolis, Duke needs a boost right now, and that could come from Jeff Kaber. He is able, Quinn, to beat these guys off the dribble, as you mentioned earlier, and he did it right there. He's the guy, one of two guys they have that can make plays, and they need to do that. Darren Wilson picked up his fourth foul. The energy all started to go in, on the part of Eastern Michigan, or for Eastern Michigan, when Theron was in in the first half. Here in the second, uh, uh, early in the second half, here late, Theron Wilson is not going to be much of a factor. I expect Ricky Price and Jeff Capel to be the guys that get Duke back where they need to go. Capel misses his first free throw of the game. He's got seven points to go along with three rebounds. Here's Brian Tobert. For three, fading away to the side, he shot off the side of the rim. I was gonna let you say that because that was a long shot too. That's one they really don't have to have now. They got an eight-point lead. They don't need to be taking long shots. You don't 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 stall your offense, but you don't have to take very long shots either. Taper almost a backcourt violation. Real close to the half-court line. Here's Price, 16 on the shot clock. Price fading away. Halfway down, Newton with the recovery. Wow. So that's what Duke got in the first half when they the game was close at halftime. Offensive rebounds, and they get it because Newton is big and Domzowski take up a lot of space down there. And Newton was very active. He's come back here in the second half. Price takes a tough shot. Ball gets knocked around, and Newton is always around it. Just couldn't get that one to go down because he was fouled. Newton at the line for the Blue Devils. Two shots. So Greg Newton, 13 points and nine rebounds. Very solid game for him. And you're talking about offensive rebounds. He's fourth in the ACC in offensive rebounds. He stays around the glass. He gives a very good feel for where the ball is going to go. As you look at the bracket, Connecticut beating Colgate. And then tonight we've got Mississippi State and Virginia Commonwealth and UCLA and Princeton. Newton with six offensive rebounds. 
and we get a whistle and time out time by out. Eastern Michigan. Seven oh three to go. Fifty two forty six Eagles. Right and right and right. You're too old to own a computer. Yep. Right and right every Saturday. I know. We should let your students do that. Come to the market with me. No, I gotta work. During development, the Aurora's V8 engine raced the equivalent distance of 31 Indy 500s back to back. It also broke 47 speed endurance records, two of which had been set by Mercedes. And along the way, it hit a top speed of 3,500 miles per hour. My mistake, that was the Air Force's Aurora. Our version has never been clocked above Mach 3. It's your money. because it knows it has to race me. <laughs> Welcome to Heathrow, Wilson. Is London what you expected? Uh, not exactly, sir. How, how are we going to find our rental counter? We don't need a rental counter. We're with Hertz number one club gold. Gee, it's fast. Exactly. Sir, the car's waiting on your name in light. Exactly. And there's a canopy to protect us from the weather. <laughs> exactly. You know, sir, this is just like the States. Not exactly, Wilson. You're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> ah! Sorry, sir. Tonight... Are you ready? Dave welcomes Sandra Bullock, plus... Brand new special effects. Yeah! <laughs> Back in Indianapolis, and the fast break points, 14 for Eastern, only two for Duke. Eastern with 10 points off the bench as well, and against Maryland in the ACC tournament, Duke outscored 40 to nothing by Maryland's bench. John Sajak. John Sajak took that move very comfortably, got it down on the block with Domzowski, has played pretty well. So you're seeing that there's point production coming from a lot of different places for Eastern Michigan. Taman Domzowski back in the basketball game. He's playing with four fouls, and he drew the foul there. Zajac called for the foul, Eastern Michigan. So Taman Domzowski steps to the free throw line. Have 14 points, seven rebounds, and two blocks against Maryland in the ACC. Got a good stroke there. I mean, that's a shooter's touch for a big man to get it to roll up there. Touch the rim two or three times. Second free throw short. Ricky Price comes out of the pack with the ball. 54-47. Collins. Tough shot to take. They get Greg Newton for pushing in the back that time on Zajac. But that's a tough shot. And Mike is, Mike Krzyzewski is telling uh, Chris Collins, he's a guy with range. You see, he's standing on the P out there, D in Indianapolis. I mean, that's that's out there a little bit. And that's a shot. If he throws it inside, it's not bad. Boykin, high off the glass. You don't get that when you throw your arm out of socket. The little man coming up big, 15 points. Now that was left-handed. Jeff Capel. Get that dirt! Knocked out of bounds, and... Chris Collins did a good job trying to save that. Playing in maybe what could be his last game, trying to do everything he can to come up with that play, but the official said he stepped out of bounds on his way trying to save that. Collins hitting the floor. He's one of his last six. His dial inside the three-point line, and he drills it. Yeah. Quietly, he has been very solid for him. He's made plays and, and made shots. The Boykins has been good. Colbert has made some plays. 
58-47, largest lead of the game, 11 points. Here's Capel, crossing over. Zemzowski rebounds, stick back, still won't go. Knocked out of bounds, last touch by Duke. It's tough right now when you're trying to do it by yourself, and Capel is caught him out a little bit, trying to do it all by himself. Elsewhere around the country, Syracuse, UMass winning. As you would expect there. Surprise here. Eastern Michigan up 58-47. Oh, no, don't let it through that. No! He didn't do that. Yes, he did. That's Derek Dyer. Derek Dow has been on a roll. I mean, he takes this shot, and first of all, you weren't always going to worry about what told it is. And right here, Dow, nice move. He takes the shot. Now, he knows he's missed it to the left, and that's exactly where he's going. Nobody blocked him out, got pushed. Then he's excited about it, no question. <laughs> now, that's a bad look there. <laughs> Talking about following your shot. Taman Gonzalski fouling Dial. That's his fifth. He'll have to leave the game. Dial, 12 points. He's got 10 in the second half. You know, he has been a really good player. We've talked about Boykins and what he's done. But early in the first, second half, it was Dial that was coming up with loose balls and put back that got his team a lead. And he's been very active in this, session, this segment of the game as well. Ten rebounds right now for Greg Newton. But Duke in a lot of trouble. Down 60-47, under five to play. Somebody has to step up. Will it be Capel? Is on that shot as he buries it. I'll say they're in trouble, but with 450 to go with the Duke team, I'm telling you, as long as you can shoot three-pointers, you're fine. The problem Duke has now is they've got to stop somebody. Ten-point lead now for Easter. Here's Earl Boykins showing some patience on the offensive end. Try to milk the clock a little bit. Well, they've got options. They can now go to dial, dial that number, if you will, and then find Tober, because both of them can get it going offensively. Here's Tober, kick out, dial, pump fake, back out to Tober from down. Ah! Yeah, so those are your options when you got guys like that. Eastern Michigan, 18 points for the senior from Detroit. 63-50. Collins skip pass. Capel. Collins again. Here's Capel exploding down the baseline, leaving his feet. And cuts the bucket and the foul. Just Capel. Capel does a good job. He missed the first three-pointer and didn't feel comfortable with it. So when he came back to him that time, he'll give you a little head and shoulder fake and take it to the hole strong. Collins does a good job. You see, he just catches it, goes right to the basket. Coming over, no doubt about it, but Capel had missed the first shot. Wanted to make sure he got something going to the basket. Looks to complete the three-point play. So Jeff Capel stepping to the free-throw line. He's a 76% free-throw shooter on the season. His father, head coach at Old Dominion, sporting the Duke cap as he watches his son play. Last year, what a run for them. Beating Villanova in the first round in, I believe it was triple overtime or double overtime. Yeah, he triple made triple overtime. overtime. He made a great run. And he's done a very good job at OVU. Also led North Carolina A&T in his first, in, his first season, rather, to the NCAA tournament as well. Out of the MEAC conference. Now, this is a good move. This is Jay Heaps, who's a soccer player. He's, he's one of their freshmen. He's a walk-on, but they've been so depleted with bodies. You know he's going to have good footwork, and look at the pressure he's putting on board. 17 on the shot clock. Here's Boykin sliding inside, pulling up. And Boykin wants to show, I play basketball. And Boykin's getting that swagger in his step. 3.23 to go, 65-53 Eastern. This is what it's come down to the Duke. They have to get a, uh, a soccer player to come play for them because they just they don't have enough people to play positions, particularly at the guard position. 
little shake and bake right here. Well, let's just, Boykins. Boykins just knows that any moment I can take it. I, I feel like I can take it. He gets in it. And I, what he does so well, better than a lot of low guards that I've seen play, is he can pull up and stick that little jump shot. So it makes it much more difficult to guard him because now you got to come out and he can make the jump shot. Collins at the line. Chris Collins at the free throw line. on the season a 72 percent free throw shooter he's a senior this could possibly be his last collegiate basketball game no, and he's playing it with that kind of courageousness and determination because he's had a real difficult time i've watched him getting anything going off of that foot but he's really making it up first of all he's got a screw in his foot and it bent when he broke it when he fell the last time when he hurt his ankle he bent the screw in his foot Traveling yeah, violation called against the Eagles on the baseline. Ricky Price coming back into the contest for Duke. Heaps takes a seat. Three minutes remaining in this game between Eastern Michigan, the ninth seed, Duke, the eighth seed. Here's Capel to the cup. Has it swatted by Wilson. He'll get it back. Up again and in. Try to make some things happen, and that's the smart thing to do. Now they've got Theron Wilson back in the game with two and a half to go. But when you got a guy like Borkins, it makes it difficult because he's hard to double team. Nine point lead now for Eastern Michigan. Duke trying to trap up top. Here's Tolbert. Take it off. And a flyer. I mean, this boy offensively has a lot of game. 20 points. 67-56, 2-13, and a steal by Borkins, and he keeps his dribble. <laughs> oh, no, no, he didn't do that. Earl Borkins. No. Borkins is a guy that will give you energy, but he, he catches Chris Collins making a turn. Got away maybe with a little grab, but he gets it, goes down on one knee, and then he gets fouled. It's a chance to shoot two foul shots. But as I said to you at the top of the show, he is the energy. He is what makes them go. Tolbert can hit shots. Dial can make plays. But in order, in order to get the train moving, you need a little fuel. This is the fuel. Two minutes, six seconds left in the second half. Eastern Michigan on top of Duke, 68 to 56. Earl Boykins, he's got a nice game, 5-4. He's got 18 points, 8 of 14 from the field. What program are you reading? The one I read said 5-7. I know, he, he is, if he's 5-4, he's lucky at that size, too. 5-4, five, 5-5 five, five tops. Here's Brunson. I mean, you see Mike Krzyzewski doing a lot of clapping and, and encouraging because Mike Krzyzewski's group has come out and played very well. But Mike said to us as we talked to him yesterday, he wants his group to come out, compete, get that winning fire. Under two minutes to play, Eastern Michigan surprising Duke 69-56. Maybe it's not a surprise. Courtesy of Earl Boykins, he's got 18 points. Got 18 points, got a lot of help from Derek Dow. Brian uh, Colbert has played well. Theron Wilson with blocking shots. Got, out, got put out of the game on the five. So this, if Eastern Michigan is able to hold on, will set up a matchup between the Eagles and the top-seeded Connecticut Huskies in the next round on Saturday. Coming up later, Mississippi State, VCU, and UCLA, Princeton. Two shots. What can happen if you look at Eastern Michigan going on to play Connecticut? Both teams would prefer an up-tempo, where I think Connecticut has a bit of an advantage is Connecticut has some bigger bodies to put in there to get some rebounds Mills to help them run. Is in for Eastern Michigan. But the big story in the Connecticut game, Ricky Moore, number 21, jumping up here 
falling down on Rudy Johnson and injuring his shoulder. Ricky Moore may not play on Saturday. They say he will not play. Well, in that game, why that's, that's important is Ricky Moore. Well, excuse me. Price, for you. Price makes a tough move. Ricky Moore would have to guard Earl Boykins because he's the guy with the kind of quickness that you'd want out there guarding. Fellas on Dukes, number three. This is, Price, this is some kind of second. move here. Ricky Price, a very good offensive player. Take it up on one side, show it to him, take it back. Ooh, nice touch off the other side. Boykins at the line. It looks like a young gun down <laughs> Two shots. In my dreams. 70-58. It's Boykins. He's the wrong man to foul. Earl Boykins on the season. An 80% free throw shooter. And if you're Eastern Michigan, you want to have your point guard to have the ball because he'll make the best decisions. But it just it happens to help if he's one of your top foul shooters. 72 58 125 left Jeff Capel arcing up the three tapped out to Brian Tober Tober with 20 points almost lost it there and watch Earl Boykins as he keeps his dribble that's Paula Blowtrop is actually right there you know, so low to the ground. You know, when you're that small, one of the things that you have to be able to do is handle the ball. Now watch. He gets it, and he knows he's got the defense on him a little bit. He moves it around, uses his body to protect himself. Jay Heaps reached across the back and fouls him. Fouls him. But if you're smaller, then take advantage of your quickness. Make sure your ball handling is at the top of its game. One reason that Earl Boykins is such a great ball handler when he was a kid, he used to practice dribbling a tennis ball. And he said when he finally would then start dribbling a basketball after practicing with tennis ball, there's no contest. The, the basketball felt like it was a big old beach ball. And you watch him move the ball around. He has very solid control with the basketball. So you, you know that that paid off for him. He periodically dribbles that tennis ball now. A minute, six seconds left. Here's Heaps. Control there. 2 0 1 break. The lob. Alley oop Wilson. Great anticipation by Capel. He saw the lob coming. Here's Collins. Chris Collins. And a quick timeout. 11 Luda. points for Chris Collins. 73 60 Eagles. In searching for a luxury performance sedan, Michael Young tested the Oldsmobile LSS against three of the fastest Japan has to offer the Infiniti J30, Lexus ES300, and Teppanyaki chef Yasu Norimoto. And while his 240 horsepower LSS was no match for Yasu's speed, not only did Mr. Young fare much better against the imports, he had them for lunch. Will the LSS pass your test? The emotions are high. You're hot. It's pressure. It's like a war without bullets. We asked some of the hottest coaches in the game to switch antiperspirants and try Degree. Body heat activated. Let's try it and see. As your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection when you need it most. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to switch. Just keeps you dry. It certainly worked for me. Switch to the antiperspirant that's body heat activated. In the heat of the moment. That self-confidence has got to be there. Degree antiperspirant for an extra degree of protection. Last year, nearly 8 million people had their lives turned upside down by unemployment. Hate to say it, but that's life. We're the first company that allows unemployed clients greater access to their annuity without a penalty. And that can help a lot until things get straightened out. That's New York Life, the company you keep. And only from Anheuser-Busch. The non-alcohol brew for any occasion. 
Join 60 Minutes Ed Bradley at ringside Sunday to watch Muhammad Ali, still the greatest, in the fight of his life against the toughest opponent he ever fought, Parkinson Syndrome. There you see disappointment in the face of Jeff Capel and the Duke bench. They're trailing 73 to 60. 50 seconds left to play. Coach Krzyzewski emptying his bench, putting his starters on the bench, except for Chris Collins playing in his last collegiate game. This was a breakthrough year for Mike Krzyzewski. He wanted to get his group, if you will, a bridge year. After last season, get it back on track, get the winning attitude, the winning effort, and then he can go back and approach it looking more at winning the championship. But at no point in the conversation with Mike Krzyzewski did he ever say, we don't think we have a chance. He's realistic about it. Here's Wilson ahead. Exclamation point. Eastern Michigan will face Connecticut in the next round. James Head, three on one. Mills allows it to go out of bounds. Our Chevrolet most valuable players, Earl Boykins, no surprise there, 23 points, 4 assists, and Greg Newton, 15 points and 10 rebounds for Duke. Is in for Eastern Michigan. So Derek Dial takes a seat for Eastern, along with Tony also. Did his job by putting the ball in the basket, 20 points. Chris Collins got emotional. Great college career. As soon as he grabbed Mike Krzyzewski, he got emotional. This is his last game, and he expected, like a lot of people that go to Duke, to have a chance to go for an NCAA championship, but it wasn't meant to be. Lost to Arkansas two years ago. Red, 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 red. They expect this, you know, every goal in seven times in ten years, you expect this to be a routine thing, and, and it just was not meant to be. Three seconds. Final score. The Eagles from Eastern Michigan beat the Duke Blue Devils 75 to 60. They will advance to the next round and take on the Huskies from Connecticut.